All right, uh, good afternoon, my students. Um, this is supposed to be a practical course on 441 station management. So we try to devise a means to help you understand it more better. Like I said, it's going to be a practical course. Amaka Mad is my name. I just want to go to this, uh, this, the main thing. I'm going to summarize based on the ethics of station management, who's a station manager, um, the organization, how you are going to organize the office as in a media house, whether it's a radio or a television station. So in summary, we have three types of um, radio or TV has operational in Nigeria here, not really abroad, but operational in Nigeria. We have the one owned by the federal government, one owned by the state government, and a community radio, which UNISIC FM is more like only the community radio we have here in Anambra State. In Lagos, we have um, UNILAG, another state, but here in, in Anambra State, we're going to concentrate more in Anambra State, which is UNISIC FM. The federal one here in Anambra State will have only the Federation of, Federal Corporation of Nigeria, FROC, and Purity FM, based in Mbaku. That's the only radio house we have here in Oka, based in Oka, in Anambra State. Then under the state, or we can say it's under state or commercial radio stations, we have the ABS, we have the Ogene, Blaze, all those ones. Though we categorize it under state or private or commercial because they're mainly owned by personal individuals or by state. And also the trying to organize it as well at times is being run by government. Like the ABS is owned and run by the Anambra State government. They have um head of station or station manager. Like in FROC and owned by the federal government, their head there is they call it general manager. The general manager is being supervised by a seasonal director based in Enugu. Because it's being owned by the federal government, they have three ties. You know, from the general manager to the zonal director who is based in Enugu, based on the zonal area. Then the main person, the DG, they call it the DG, is based in Abuja. You understand? When, when it comes to the state, it depends on if the state is directly involved. But if it's being owned by the private stations, definitely they'll have a station manager as well. Although some people call it head of station. You understand? And when it comes to uh, community radio like Red, uh, Unisic FM 94.1 uh, FM, we have a station manager by name, um, Mrs. Ifi Obi. Then in the hierarchy, there is a way we categorize it in when it comes to campus radio. Like here in Unisic FM, we have the station manager, we have the deputy station manager, we have programs heads and other departmental heads. But here in Unisic, we have a director. You understand who is like every decision making must pass through her table. But in all, the station manager is the one that sees to the run day to day running of the station in the campus radio. Then in the one owned by commercial uh, commercial proposers like ABS and other ones like Gwena and so on. The head of station or general manager takes care of everything about it, but he's being supervised by someone who may be the director, depending on what they call it, or a board of director. Yeah? Then for the federal government, like I told you before, general manager through the general director, then to the DG who is based in Abuja. Then let's talk about differences between all these radio houses in summary. For the federal one, I told you, is being owned by the federal government, managed by a federal government, then managed by experienced staff. You know, they, they, they go for people who have the experiences or who have gone through rigorous process or trainings in the media industry. Yes, for the federal radio, they can go for any jingle as far as it's not going contrary to the rules or regulations of the federal government laws in Nigeria. And, and they, at times, they may not go for some programs or jingle that will cause public dis, they disarray or may bring confusion among the people. Unlike the state-owned the state owned radio like ABS, there you, you may be hearing more of the federal, uh, state government achievements, what the state is doing, though they go on commercial purpose as well. But for the campus radio, normally it is not meant for commercial purpose. I must tell the truth. According to Nigeria NBC code, campus radio are meant like is, is, is like a training ground. Like here in Unisic FM, uh, Unisic FM is like a training ground for students. In fact, the main object of, of this session is to help students go through the practical process after the, the theory in the class with their lecturers. We are not meant for co commercial purposes. And also, there are some, even if we decide to commercialize Unisic FM now, there are some programs we cannot run, but for the state and federal, they can as well go ahead with it. And also, at times, the price varies. For state and federal, at times, their price is higher than the, commercial, than the community radio if we decide to go on a low scale 
budget maybe for running an advertisement or any other jingles production as well. And also, we'll come to the rich as well. NBC, there are some codes in NBC, we call NBC codes or rules, that regulate our transmission, one, that regulates where people get us, as in like our rich, understand. Like Radio Nigeria, Federal Purity FM, then when they came into Oka, recent, uh, then, in those days, 13 or 15 years back, you can get them like in 10 or 11 states. NBC cannot restrict their broadcast level. ABS as well. But for, for community radio like you in the Zik FM, NBC controls where people can get us. Let me just put it down like that. There are places, like if you listen to Unizik FM at, 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 at times, you may not get us more than four or five states, even when we are trying to, you know, advance. But the rules still stand that we cannot go more than some levels of transmission. Then when it comes to maybe the, the, the structure here, like I told you before, in community radio, we have limited structure, organizational structures. We may not have much staff, though here we have because we are being controlled by UNESIC management. But when you go to Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, for instance, or ABS, many students, they have many staff, student trainees, IT students like you call it, uh, there's what we call casual or guest artists. Yes. Though in, in campus radio, you may have some few uh, uh, guest artists. But when you go to state-owned and federal-owned, we'll have lots of guest artists there. Then in, in trying to get who manage the, the station, whether government-owned, whether federal or community radio, you will get an experienced somebody, someone, whether male or female, that's experienced in the field, that can manage the station, you understand? And also somebody that is, that is capable of knowing every bit Teeth and beat can use that of radio broadcasting or even TV broadcasting, anyone you're describing. Because you can't bring somebody that read English, doesn't know anything about um, um, programming or anything to be a, a station manager. You, you know, there are some lapses. So NBC will always advise that whoever is going to be the head of station or is going to foresee the management of the, of the station, somebody that is experienced in the field, it also helps in the programming. You understand? Because when you employ somebody that doesn't know anything about the duration, timing, ethics of the profession, that's what we call ethics of the profession. But because of time, we're not going into details. But in being a station manager or managing a station, you have to imbibe by the ethics of the profession. When you, you should know when to do this and when not to do that. That will be in another in another of our classes. I've talked about uh, the, the structure, people that are supposed to manage it, the way they operate it, the, the staff as well. You can, yes, you can employ somebody that is not good in mass communication, who, who doesn't have any experience in media, but you can't employ him or her to be the head of station or, or a station manager. That's where the quality of a station manager comes in. Like I said earlier, somebody that, that's capable of running the station, knowing everything about programming, knowing everything, even, even an engineering aspect is also an advantage too. So you know when to go in and say that we're having a technical issue or not, though we have an engineer you understand, that runs the station, in every of the stations. So now trying to, the, the main objective of this three uh, owned radio, whether federal, whether state, or campus radio, or community radio, radio that the same thing, campus radio or community radio, that does the same thing, is that everything, the target of all of them is to get, is to the listener. The target there is the, main, the primary objective of educating, entertaining, and trying to make people understand that this information is vital. That is the key objective. So whether it is a, is a it's a better own radio, state or community radio, the objective is just the same. Another thing is, it's an advantage when the station manager is somebody, like I said, that is experienced. You know, some of these radio houses, they know that they will, if you're applying to, uh, uh, for a job of a station manager, they will tell you, uh, we need like 10 years, 15 years experience in the media. It just to see to the day-to-day -day running of the station. We're going to talk more about maybe the similarities in those stations or more of the differences and how it looks like in order of our classes. Thank you very much.